Oh, should I, should I say? Go for it. Uh, how do I meditate when I don't want to meditate, basically? I know it uh, sounds like a frivolous question, but <clears throat> it's a serious issue for me because <laughs> yeah. when, I, when I sit down, I can do it for like a short time, but eventually it's like, you know, I get frustrated, my muscles cramp up, it feels like uh, my head is shaking, it becomes just really difficult. So I, I end up just like, you know, getting up, you know, whatever it is, I make an excuse or it really gets very difficult. So mm -hmm. I guess my ego is like against it or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I guess, I don't know, I hope that's not a frivolous question. Because no, no, I it's... Uh... People recommend just, you know, sitting through it. But, you know, either I don't have the willpower for it or I'm just lazy. But so is there any like practical advice question. for that? I think there's something we miss and, and that's the forcing ourselves to meditate, which can be... You know, it's it's not always the best idea because you will cultivate a aversion to meditation, and that's no good. Um, that being said, in the beginning, you don't know what's good for you. You can think of it as the um, learning process of a adolescent. You know, as a child, you have to force them to learn. You have to push them to learn. Not force, but you have to at least direct them. Um, even still, forcing doesn't generally have the desired effect and as a result parents who push their children too hard find them break and, and you know, rebel or, or, or worse can, you know, destroy their lives out of just the intense stress. But you should look at it that way. The, the mind, for all intents and purposes, we're, we're, we're children. You know, we never really grow up many of us never really grow up, and many parts of us never really grow up. The spiritual part for most of us is is um, quite young. If you're, if, especially if, if you acknowledge that you don't like to meditate, then, then it's, you have to treat yourself as a child. You know, you have a child's mind, which is for most of us the case. And so in the beginning, you have to be a little bit insistent. And if you think of it as a child, how would you teach a child? You obviously, hopefully you wouldn't beat the child or, or force the child to, to you know, in, to the extent that it caused the child stress and, and uh, repression. But on the other hand, you wouldn't just let the child sit around eating candy all day or watching cartoons all day. You'd try to direct them in a wholesome direction. So... There's no easy answer in the beginning, in the be except except to answer no. Don't simply force yourself to meditate. You have to understand that you're still a child and you're not going to want to meditate. On the other hand, don't say, "Well, then I just won't meditate." Obviously, I'm sure you know that that's not the case. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking this question. You want to meditate, you just don't want to meditate. Yeah. You see the problem. You 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 know it's good for you. You're all grown up intellectually, but Part of you is still, you know, a, a child. Um, a big part of it is our disconnect with the actual benefits of meditation. We're not machines where you can input the benefits of meditation and have that stick. You can tell yourself, you can listen to a talk on how great meditation is and just say, yeah, meditation is awesome, I want to meditate. Ten minutes later you'll have forgotten it and it just won't be in your psyche, that won't be an input. So you'll be saying, why am I doing this again? You know, and you just don't have any desire for it. Which is kind of absurd because just a moment, you know, ten minutes ago, you were clear, meditation is awesome, I'm clear that it's a good thing, it's really going to help me. That can go on in a meditation course. You'll be practicing, you'll say, wow, this is so wonderful, and meditation just helps me so much. And then the next day you're like, I want to leave, this is useless, this is, what am I doing? I'm, you, because we're organic. This is because the mind is is biological. It, it, the, 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 sorry, not biologically, but basically, the mind is a part of the organism, and uh, it's it's not going. It's not like a computer. You, it's going to um, act irrationally, and so a part of it, you know, part of it is going to be stepping back and saying, okay, yes, I don't want to meditate, I acknowledge that, and not ignoring that and, and pushing on. Um, and I guess the meaning is, accept that part, accept, or not accept, but, but observe and acknowledge, is the word, acknowledge that part that I don't want to meditate. And you'll find, 
if you can truly acknowledge that, that, you, that you're able to actually meditate on it, you know, meditate on the frustration, meditate on the, the disliking, and you find it evaporates. Uh, at the same time, as you do that, as you accept, or, or not accept, acknowledge, you know, and, and focus more on the fact that you don't want to meditate than on actually meditating through it, um, at the same time, you know, re, you know, ask yourself the question honestly and openly, is meditation good for me? Bring yourself back to that question that you've probably answered in the past, but re answer it again for yourself. Why am I doing this? You know, is it really good for me? And don't just accept some answer that you heard on the internet, but really ask yourself, you know, what do I want in life? Is this really going to benefit me? And sometimes that takes a little bit of soul searching, soul searching, a bit of introspection, you know, saying, you know, no, I really just want to play sports and have sex and, and, and uh, eat food all day, you know. But, you, but, but then you say, okay, yes, I acknowledge I want all that, uh, but, but really? And then you say to yourself, then if you're honest with yourself, you say, but, but no, that doesn't actually satisfy me. That isn't actually benefiting me. And so eventually coming to the conclusion of meditation is something I want to do. So I, there's room for having this sort of introspection and reflection. Um, sort of vimangsa. Vimangsa means adjusting, you know, reflecting on your activity and ensuring that you're directing yourself in the in the right way so i guess two parts you know try to be very very aware of the aversion to the meditation um understanding that you know after some time you really if you do grow up um and again i'm not this isn't an insult most of us are in this situation as you grow up you'll want to meditate more um, but understand that in the beginning you're going to have to finesse, you know, and you're going to have to play games, you know, to to help the child grow up. Uh, and on the other, uh, and and on on the other side also have these kind of philosophical you know, uh, conversations with yourself about, you know. I don't know if it's so much a conversation, but it's still just an acknowledgement. You know, you have to accept the argument, like a judge. And you can't just ignore one side because you know the you know, if you know this this side is guilty. You, know, you can't just ignore them and say I'm only going to listen to the prosecution. The you, you'll have it'll be a mistrial. You see, it's not the outcome isn't. No one is sure. You know, no one is going to come out and say yes. It was proven that this person was guilty. You didn't even give them a chance to present their case. The mind is like that. If you don't give the defilements you know, the, the, their chance to speak, maybe not quite so much, but in a sense, yes, once the aversion, for example, to meditation arises, um, it's too late. It's already unwholesome, so pushing it away isn't going to help. This is why the Buddha said, when there's aversion arises in the mind, the key is to to see that aversion has arisen in the mind, not to judge it at all. This is how a judge works. They don't judge. They observe. And they come to a decision based on the facts, not based on any kind of judgment. So um, that's really what you have to do. Try and, and you'll feel this. You'll You'll feel that the difference between forcing yourself to do something and just you know it's it's like a, it's like how religious people feel when they're kind of believing in god just because they're afraid to go to hell or because their parents have told them or because you know intellectually they believe in god or whatever as opposed to actually truly um accepting something or or un no, say understanding something uh, you'll feel this, you'll feel the difference between accepting meditation because someone told you or because intellectually you believe it's right and actually getting a sense of how good meditation is for you. It's much more important. So it's a very good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much.